Luigi's Mansion 3 has been out for about two weeks, and already it's garnered tons of positive reviews from fans and critics alike. It's a huge step up from Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon for Nintendo 3DS, as the newfound technical capabilities of the Nintendo Switch make it look stunning, makes use of the Nintendo Switch's controller vibration and gyro features, and opens the door for enhancements to gameplay such as the revival of the explorative nature of the mansion from the first game, or rather the hotel in this case. Hey guys, it is MCN Mike here, and I am here to talk to you about my delayed thoughts on Luigi's Mansion 3. Unlike other reviewers, I was not given a copy of the game early as I'm not a big enough content creator, but I still want to talk about Luigi's Mansion 3 as a consumer as I have a lot to say about it regardless of media hierarchies at work, and maybe me talking about it will convince you to pick it up for yourself. Remember, Christmas is only a month and a half away, so you better get started on those lists. With all that being said, let's talk about Luigi's Mansion 3. Keep in mind that there will be spoilers for certain areas of the game, including bosses and potentially the final boss. You've been warned. The story goes that Luigi and company have been invited to the Last Resort Hotel, where they can finally relax after being captured by a lizard monster and throwing their hat everywhere, <coughs> Mario Odyssey. After settling in, Luigi wakes up to find the hotel dark and dreary, contrary to its appearance beforehand. Suddenly, Peach and Mario are also gone. After examining the floor, Luigi realizes that his friends were turned into portraits by King Boo and his new partner in crime, hotel owner Helen Grave. Yes, the owner of a ghost-infested hotel's last name is Gravely. This shows that a little research of where you're going goes a long way. After escaping through a literal garbage disposal at the end of the hall, our journey begins. I would go on, but what fun would it be if I just explained the entire story to you? Let's get into the gameplay. The gameplay in Luigi's Mansion 3 is exactly what you would expect. You flash a ghost with your light, and while sucking up the ghost, you pull the control stick in the opposite direction to drain the ghost's health. However, this time around, we have a new feature. If you played Dark Moon, you'd remember the power bar that eliminated help from ghosts when you hit A after charging the bar. This time around, we have the slam function, which lets you, as the name dictates, slam a ghost around, and even hit other ghosts. Yes, slamming a ghost into a piece of furniture or another ghost is exactly as satisfying as it looks. The Poltergeist G00 is filled to the brim with new features this time around, including the new suction cup launcher. With this new attachment, Luigi can wreak havoc on the environment around him, as he's able to literally slam objects around and break everything. This new mechanic also allows Luigi to reveal hidden secrets that you couldn't access with just the vacuum. They say with great power comes great responsibility, but I think most of us just threw that right out the window when we realized we can break things with the suck cup. Another cool feature of the Poltergeist G00 is the area burst attack. Whenever you're in a tough spot with a lot of ghosts, this move will save your butt because it propels your butt in the air. As cool as this feature is, I feel like it should have been used more as I feel like it was rarely needed for puzzles or uncovering secrets. I will admit it's great for getting rid of sand, especially at the Tomb Suites floor where everything is covered in sand. You ever wonder where the Poltergeist G00 got its name? Well look no further than Gooigi. This new character adds a whole new layer to puzzles, and is one of the best additions to the series as a feature. If you've been in a room where a chest is just barely out of reach, and is only blocked off by a fence, and it's Gooigi to the rescue. His malleable texture allows him to squeeze through just about anything. The best part is that every time you enter something as Gooigi, you have to listen to this noise. Gooigi can also serve as a player too if you're in co-op, but if you're like me and have no friends, you could still control him yourself by switching between him and Luigi. Thanks to this switching ability, you're able to team up with Gooigi to destroy bigger objects that Luigi can't destroy himself. Overall, I'd say Gooigi is a great feature that made the game a lot more interesting. There aren't as many collectibles as the first game, 
but in Luigi's Mansion 3, we see the return of gems in each area. This trend started in Dark Moon, where if you collected all 13 gems, you'd have a neat little statue in the gallery. This time around, there's 6 gems for each of the 15 floors. What do you get for collecting all the gems in the game? You get to look at the gems in the gallery. No statue or anything, just the gems sitting there. Uh, oh, wait, um, you actually get a diamond-encrusted suction cup. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing, because I thought the statues in Dark Moon were pretty cool. Returning to the series are the booze. In Dark Moon, the booze had health anywhere from 20 to 40, depending on the area you were in. In the first game, the booze health got progressively higher with each room you found one in, maxing out at 300. Meanwhile, in Luigi's Mansion 3, there's one boo per floor, they're all at a consistent 20 health. Yeah, it takes away the challenge of capturing boos, especially from the first game, which is very unfortunate. In multiplayer, we see the return of the Scare Scrape, where you and three other players have to capture ghosts and get through all the floors in a certain amount of time. However, new to the scene is Scream Park a collection of mini-games where up to 8 players can compete against each other. While I think it's a cool concept, I'm more of a scare scraper kind of guy. Maybe it's because I love playing it in Dark Moon, but I had a better time playing scare scraper. Overall, what's my opinion on the game? I think Luigi's Mansion 3 contains a perfect balance between linearity towards the questline, while also allowing you to explore the hotel at your own pace. I know this has been said a lot, but the graphics are honestly stunning and they really make the game look amazing, even in handheld mode at 720p 30fps. You can tell next level games actually listen to their community when they complained about Dark Moon and all of its flaws, because most of those discrepancies have since been removed in this new iteration. Additionally, I absolutely love the level design. Each floor felt very unique and distinctive from the others, and all the detail that went into each area was superb. Personally, I'm a fan of the musical theater floor, mostly because I'm a Broadway nerd. However, I will say though, I do have one small problem with the game. After beating the final boss, you're sent to the title screen. Upon opening the file select, I discovered that there is no way to explore the hotel after beating the game like past games. With Dark Moon, you were at least able to go back into the levels, as, and the final boss was selectable as a level once you beat the game. But for some reason, they removed the post-game, and I use that term very loosely, from Luigi's Mansion 3. Thankfully though, you're able to load your autosave before you enter the final boss room, and complete everything you want to complete before taking on King Boo. Aside from that minor issue, I absolutely love this game. I'd even go as far as to say that it's a must-have for any Nintendo Switch owner. Consider putting this on your Christmas list this year, kids. Thanks for watching my review of Luigi's Mansion 3. This is my first time doing a game review, so I hope it wasn't too cringeworthy to watch all the way through. Remember to subscribe to this channel for stream archives and other videos that I like to make. Remember to also follow my Twitch in the description below for the next time when I am live, which is going to be tomorrow if this video goes up on time. Ah, now, if you excuse me, I have to go get ready to review Pokemon Sword.